I can't even imagine how many times that probably happens with you guys. And then you guys are already at a point where you're like, this is nothing. I can do this. Especially, but is there still times where you're like, okay, I'm kind of nervous right now? I've been at this a long time now. And so I kind of go in and, and I really kind of focus on the work that I'm doing. And, and I try to give my all and, and pour my energy into the work. So I can't say that I get nervous anymore um, whenever I'm in the studio because I've just done it so much. Occasionally, you know, if it's a big project, I might get a little bit nervous. But no, now I'm, I'm really more focused on the work, which is, which to me is a joy because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that networking is a huge reason why a lot of people get into like the acting scene? Because I've always felt like there's not really one way to get into voice acting. There's no one there's, way to do it. Th yeah. Because if there was one way, then everyone would be doing right. that. So there's multiple different ways. But do you believe that networking, connections, who you know, how you know, does that play a big part? And could that also kind of maybe bring someone's self-esteem down like oh well look at that person they know so many people i can't be like that here's Does what that i'll say about it makes complete sense okay and what i'll say is this is that um first i want to address what you said is like oh my god they know more people than me mm -hmm. look th that's there's always going to be somebody that's more talented than you. There's, mm -hmm. There are zillions mm -hmm. of people who are far more talented than me, mm -hmm. but nobody can work harder than me. You see what I'm saying? I hear, uh, there's, a, there's a person that I follow a lot. His name's Gary V. Yeah. Gary Vandercheck. I don't know if you might have noted. No, no I, don't, I don't know. If you, if you ever have the time, look him up. He's he's very, I love his worth ethic, and he said the same exact thing. You don't work harder than me. And I noticed in your panel you said something that that hit the bone because i i can relate so much the reason why i'm up here and you're not is because i've failed more times than you yeah exactly. i remember you saying that and that just spoke volumes i know exactly Good. what you mean and it's true and it, it, it's true and, and for those of you who are watching like what i said in my panel is uh is is exactly that is like the reason why i'm standing up here and you're sitting down there is because i've failed more than you have and so the, what I would encourage anybody who is interested in getting in, in any aspect of your career, even if it's not in acting, you have to fail to win. That's that's part of the, the process. And so the more you fail, the more you win. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the question that you had. To, you, you said something and I, I got off on the last thing that you I said. I can't even remember it. Dude, yeah, I don't even remember what time I woke up this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday morning at con. It's, it's totally fine. Don't worry about um, it. But at any rate, I mean, what I think what it was, uh, there's no one way into acting is what you were saying. Yes. Okay. And yeah. so as far as like uh, there, there is no uh, and nepotism. That's what we were going to. So there is, is who, you know, mm -hmm. so that is a massive part, a massive part mm -hmm. of the industry. Mm -hmm. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it, I, I'm not saying it's bad or good. That's mm -hmm. just the way it is. Yeah. Now, what I'll also say is that it is who, you know, but it's also who, you know, being met with preparedness so mm -hmm. um it, it's twofold you need to you need to network you it, it's super helpful the more people you know the more people who, that you're introduced to the more likely they're they're willing to give you a shot um but then also if you if they give you a shot and you're not prepared then you're not going to get another shot no. you know so mm -mm. prepare mm -hmm. practice make sure that uh, that you're prepared when that opportunity arises yeah you know um, but yeah, for sure, networking is a big part of it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise because it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's not everything. Mm. It's not everything. Mm. So it, it's it, it's part of the process. But really focus on your talent and yes. just be the best that you can be. Uh -huh. And uh, the networking will come will follow along. Yeah. And email email. I mean, that's exactly what I did. I mean. I started sending out emails to different actors asking questions, and one of them, uh, Erica Harlacker. Hi, I'm Erica Harlacker, and out here, let's go! Oh, she's like great. I, yeah, yeah she's, she's awesome. She's super sweetheart. Uh, I started emailing, and I was like, hey, this is uh, this is who I am, this is what I do. Uh, I'd like to meet up with you and, and do an interview, and by those little interviews, like right now, now I'm not saying that there's no ulterior motive for why I'm doing this. This is just generally because I love voice acting. I want people to be informed about what it is and how to get into it. And you never know who's gonna respond to you. And you never know where that's gonna lead you. Yeah. So sure. definitely don't don't beat yourself up about it. Just do it. And don't live life thinking what if. I leave it like, oh well, 
All right. Time yeah. to move on to something else. Yeah. No, don't leave, live your life thinking what if. I mean, I, to me, it was it would be more torturous <laughs> if with the what if yeah. versus, okay, I tried yeah. and I failed yeah. or I got an, a no. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd rather have that mm-hmm. than the what if. Over 20 years working in the industry, what has really humbled you down to the core? And what is the best trait that you have that has kept you going? Um, I think that... Uh, what has humbled me down to the core and the trait that has kept me going is um, I'm too stupid to quit, so I keep doing it. Um, but what has really humbled me down to the core, and I, I think that probably one of the most special things about my career um, has been the the convention scene because it was never on my radar when I first started mm-hmm. uh, acting. It, it never even occurred to me that um, there would be a fan a fan base mm-hmm. for the the work that I do, mm-hmm. and so that was never on my radar. And the fact that I, I have a fan base uh, that recognize you know the work that I do and that I get invited to go around the world to go to these conventions and meet mm-hmm. and enjoy uh, and make new friends at these mm-hmm. conventions is to me just uh, you know an, an incredible blessing. Yes, uh, oh, I love yeah. it. It's it, to, to me it really makes makes it all worth it because mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, man, it's not an easy career. No, <laughs> it's a pain in the butt. It's not. And. Yeah. Um, it's it's wonderful at the same time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But this is really what makes it all worth it. Uh, is going and and meeting people and and making new friends and and sharing in what we all love about it. You know? Yes. Since okay, so back then, animes would release in Japanese. They would release all the episodes, yes. and then you're gonna help me out with this question a lot. And then the English dub would would release all of the episodes now with simul dubs being more mm-hmm. common yeah. does that put a lot more pressure on you guys as actors oh, to be in one place for a certain amount yep. of time okay Absolutely. i knew it so oh, with man. a simul dub yeah i mean before i mean like if if you're traveling or if you're off on another job or something like that then you could go and record and they could work around your your schedule mm-hmm. with simul dubs you're stuck yeah you have to be there because yep. there's a deadline a hard deadline mm-hmm. and a fast mm-hmm. deadline that they have to meet mm-hmm. you're kind of stuck yeah. as an actor oh, so yeah. Yeah, it's a tough oh, one. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> okay, so with it's only a matter of time before anime starts becoming way more mainstream. Like I've seen professional musicians, athletes, actors, the list goes on that do watch anime or have at least heard of Elon it. Musk. Yes. Big anime fan. Oh yeah, uh Steven Adams from the Oklahoma City Thunder yep. watches it too. Uh I can't remember all of them on like uh, Zac Efron, Keanu Reeves. Yep. Uh, Keanu Reeves is actually probably upset that they casted John Cho in uh, Cowboy Bebop, the yeah. live action. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think he said he wanted to do it. Samuel L. Jackson. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. Have you ever met one of your voice acting counterparts, like Japanese or a Spanish voice yeah. actor? Have you ever clicked or really enjoyed some one of them? I did. Um, actually, it was not here saying bad about all the other ones. Yeah, no, no, no definitely not, not saying um, that. I actually did. I met my Japanese counterpart uh, for a series that I hear at this convention it was like 10 years ago, but um, okay. uh, it was a series called Gun Sword or Gun X oh. Sword okay. uh, as the series. And I played the lead character, Vaughn. And um, the Japanese actor was over mm-hmm. um, at SakuraCon as they were launching uh, the series. And mm-hmm. um, I was able to have dinner with him. Now, the first part of the dinner was kind of awkward because he didn't speak any English. And, no. I, of course, I don't speak Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> so. And so we kind of just sat there and, and looked at each other for the first I can know, imagine how awkward that yeah. must have been. Uh, oh, was my God. And he was, he was cosplaying as the character, too. And he pulled it off to a T. But we sat there for 20 minutes just kind of staring at each other and looking. <laughs> and then finally, uh, a uh, translator came over, and we actually had a lovely time. That's uh, good. Having dinner together that night. And it I was, it was just... cool because he was a brand new voice actor as well. Oh, yeah. okay. Wow. All righty then. It was okay. one of his first roles. And was that, do you think a lot of the first roles are very special to a lot of voice actors, yeah. depending on how big it is? It was my first role. It was my first leading role in an anime, yeah. So he and I were just like oh, okay. sitting there kind of commiserating, like, holy okay. cow, what did we get ourselves into? What uh, um, the irony of it, of yeah. it both being your first role? Okay. Yeah. Is it very common for a lot of actors to have daytime jobs as well? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I uh, Especially in the beginning, uh, a lot of actors will have daytime jobs. Okay. Uh, because, like, literally, you have to think about it. It took me years before I was mm-hmm. able to actually mm-hmm. support myself as an actor. Oh, yeah. And so it it literally takes, I, I, I mean, I worked all kinds of jobs in the beginning, you know, and a lot of actors do. And you have to do that because acting work is very sporadic. Until you have established yourself where you're working constantly, it's super sporadic.